Okay, now when you think of economic minerals, industrial materials, you might first think of metals, right? You're probably thinking of gold, silver, copper, things like that. Those are all examples of native elements. Native elements don't have to be metals, but they often are. Native elements are just any minerals that only have a single element in their composition. So gold is just gold. Silver is just silver. Like I said, it doesn't always have to be a metal. Diamond is just carbon. Sulfur is just sulfur, right? There's, it's not combined with anything else. There's no long, complicated chemical formula. It's just one thing. Okay. So here on the periodic table, I'm showing you all of the different elements that can bond with just themselves. So first off, gold. Most gold occurs in its native state, meaning it's just gold. It's not bonded to anything else. Um, typically of hydrothermal origin in gold quartz veins. And you'll often find it with other um, economic minerals like pyrite and other sulfides. Okay. So makes sense if you're looking for gold, you want to find somewhere that has hydrothermal deposits. Uh, maybe you're going to look for a, a volcanic deposits next to a fault, right? Makes sense. We've been seeing that all along with our mining game. Um, and the gold is actually a result of the deposition of ascending mineral solutions. So that means, as we've talked about before, at depth, right, you get those volcanic processes, the really rich, hot um, ions in solution at depth. And then those fluids are going to rise because of their low density. And as they rise, they're going to cool. They're going to come into contact with less pressure. And often those ions are going to precipitate out of solution as that fluid is rising up through the faults, through the cracks, through the pore spaces closer to Earth's surface. So much of the world's gold um, is produced from deposits where the gold is classified as invisible gold, meaning you're not going to find a sample like that's shown in this picture here, right? You're very, very rarely going to find a chunk of gold. Rather, the little specks of gold are going to be so small you can't see them with just your naked eye, but our mining technology can actually separate it out in a mill. All right, so you might be curious, you know, You've heard a lot about gold. As humans, we really like gold. We use it as jewelry. We use it as money. We have a fascination with gold, partly because it's so rare. It's really easy to place value on. Um, but we use this term carat, right? 24 karat gold, 18 karat gold, six karat gold, things like that. What that means is just how much gold there is, right? So something that's 24 karat gold, that means it's pure gold, right? It's going to be that yellowy, reddish gold color, pure gold. Anything that's less than 24 karat means it's not pure gold. It means it's mixed with something else, probably silver or copper. So white gold, yeah, it's gorgeous, but it's white gold because it's mixed with silver. Same thing with rose gold. It's gorgeous, but it's rose gold because it's mixed with copper. Okay. Um, so for example, electrum is the name given to a solid solution series between um, gold and silver. Right, so that white gold could actually be electrum. As I said, gold has drawn the attention of many cultures since the earliest time because of its color. It's so shiny. It's also fairly indestructible, um, and it's really easy to work with it to fabricate fabricate ob objects. Right, it's got a low melting temperature, so you can melt it, form it, mold it. Humans have loved it since we found it. Much like gold. Humans have also found, had a fascination with silver. Um, native silver deposits, just like gold, are often the result of hydrothermal solutions that are formed as they rise up um, to shallower depths. And although native silver, silver is mined as an ore, most of the silver doesn't come from native silver. It actually comes from silver that has been bonded to other elements and other minerals, such as acanthite or proustite. Notice that silver is in that chemical formula, but it's not in its native element state. Right? And just as we saw before, silver is often mixed with either gold or copper, um, and it's, it's easy to do so. Right. Uh, silver, like gold, is often extensively used in things like jewelry and silverware, money. Um, but because it's fairly expensive, uh, we don't use it in money as much. And we've instead we've replaced it with copper and nickel, which are cheaper metals that um, is better to go into money that, you know, we're going to put in our pocket and perhaps lose.
right, next up on the native elements is copper. Um, so this is only a minor, native copper is only a minor ore of copper work worldwide. Copper is really good about being associated with other elements, other minerals, um, but it's still typically hydrothermal origin. Um, copper is very commonly found with other sulfides like chalcopyrite, boronite, um, chalcosite, right? It's often found with these other elements and incorporated into these other minerals. Um, most native copper is associated with basaltic lavas where the copper has been deposited because of the interaction with hydrothermal fluids and iron oxide minerals, right? So this theme of being associated with volcanic um, and igneous origins continues on. Um, copper is incredibly important to our society. It's so malleable. It's so ductile. It, it's a really good conductor of heat and electricity. It's resistant to erosion, so we use it all the time. We use it in our, not just our jewelry and our money, but also our pipes and our electricity electronics um, in our circuit boards, right? We also incorporate it as an ally into bronze and brass, which is used all over the place um, industrially, right? So copper, incredibly important. Not that expensive, but incredibly important. All right, next up of the native elements, we're moving away from the metals and we're gonna talk about diamonds. So diamonds are made of just carbon. There's nothing else in there, just carbon. Um, they originate below 200 kilometers in, in depth, so they're going to be in the upper mantle. And they're transported to Earth's surface by unique volcanic eruptions that drill these narrow explosive vents or pipes through the Earth's crust. Right? So they're formed in the upper mantle, and then volcanic these unique volcanic eruptions just shoot them out to Earth's surface. Um, the rock types that fill these vents are known as kimberlites and lampro uh, lamproites. Um, which consist of rocks that are formed in the mantle. So they're really ultra mafic, right? Um, very little silica in them. Now diamonds, you might be thinking of jewelry, which is true. We do use a lot of diamonds in jewelry, but we actually use a lot more diamonds um, in industrial processes because of its hardness. It has a hardness of 10, the hardest um, number on the Mohs hardness scale. So it makes excellent drill bits. So we use um, diamond all the time as an, an abrasive, as a drill bit. The final native element we're going to talk about is sulfur. So sulfur, you could have guessed it, is of volcanic origin, almost always found around volcanoes. Um, and in these settings, it replaces deposits in lens-shaped ore bodies of tufts, breaches, things like that. Um, so here you can see these people mining sulfur really going down to these volcanic vents, collecting the sulfur, carrying it away. That's why if you go to a lot of active volcanoes um, like uh, Yellowstone, it's going to smell like rotten eggs. It's going to have that sulfur smell because it's associated with that venting activity. Um, sulfur is also really common as a cap of rock salt diapirs or salt domes. Um, and it's thought to be there because of the action of sulfate reducing bacteria. So our water in Brunswick smells like rotten eggs because of the sulfate reducing bacteria in our pipes. The same thing's happening at the top of the salt zone. We have sulfate reducing bacteria. These bacteria are reducing the sulfate um, in these sulfide minerals and causing uh, sulfur to deposit. Right, so most sulfur is used in the production of sulfuric acid, um, which is really important in fertilizers. So yeah, sulfur, it smells like rotten eggs, but it's also of economic importance. We use it all the time in fertilizers um, and you can thank sulfur for your nutritious food. <laughs>